everyone. I hope this uh, day finds you well. Oh, I'm a little ratted out today. You know, that's what you get for going to bed at 3 and 3.30 and then getting up at 6.30. <laughs> so much going on out here. And some real beautiful positive changes. All of you guys, so many of you have gotten yourselves toward that Wellville station. You, you've turned your bodies around. It's incredible. I'm just talking to a young lady in here. Well, she's not young. She's probably in her 50s. And she turned herself, I mean, totally around. I mean, she just like, I mean, she looks like she took 20 years off of her. And that's the point, you know, as you get going and you resurrect the body. Uh, you just keep looking younger and younger and feeling better and better and more energy and more energy, more awareness and more awareness. And it's just, it's amazing. You, you just want to keep going and incorporate a a big part of this, after you detoxify, you want to incorporate a huge part of this kind of way of life. As much as a way of life as you can make this, you want to make it because it would naturally be your way of life if you were eating in accordance and in harmony with your species. Now, not you as soul, but you as the physical body, or I'll say just the human body. Uh, once man understands that it's a frugivore body, I think you'll see a whole nother level of spirituality on this planet, which is essential. You know, this isn't just about health. That's, that's, a, that's a given. But the infusion of spirituality here is essential because that's what this planet lacks. In that spirituality is healthier living, caring for, this, for oneself, uh, uh, controlling the mind and emotions, keeping your egos in the corner, uh, being humble and loving to all life since you see you and all life as one. Uh, that's what this planet needs, an infusion of love, an infusion of health and vitality, and we all need to work together. Medical doctors, osteopaths, chiropractors, naturopaths, herbalists, even nutritionists, we all need to get along and learn the same thing so there's not so much insanity in mixed messages. I mean, I forget what I was watching on uh, the news last night, but, uh, you know, it's like that article I showed you yesterday on supplements. And it's like, please, you know what? I mean, these are just really ignorant people that bring out these type of stories and then scoot the pharmaceuticals to the side, you know. It's just that sort of thing. And I think that it is time that man wake up out of the killing fields of pharmaceuticals and uh, medical thinking and change this to where we all are in harmony and understanding that uh, there's only two sides of chemistry, there's only two major fluids in the human body, and that... Uh, there's only two sides of chemistry, as we said. Understand the nature of acids, understand the nature of bases, and understand more of that. I think the problem comes in in science again with theories and who teaches which theory. <laughs> you know. But I think it's easy to understand health in its simplest form. I think the complexities, and I, uh, I, I was watching this a giant leap. I don't know if any of you ever bought that video, but it's just uh, beautiful, and it's a whole bunch of of spiritual people, uh, of people you know too. Also, REM's a head singer there. He's uh, featured on that as well. But it has anywhere from India, Indians to Islanders, and the music is worldwide. And they cut this to all fit, and it's just amazing. And they have sequences like under time and under spirituality and under God, and they have all these different. Uh, uh, musicians as well as spiritual people. Just beautiful stuff, you know. And this one guy had to laugh. He was a famous uh, poet and artist and stuff, and he had, was talking about, um, you know, man's brain is big enough. You know, they're talking about bigger brains and all this, and it's like, please, <laughs> you know. Man's mind is overworked and used too much, and it's blocked his spirituality. And so, therefore, he still sees and uh, isolates. And you see the same thing. The mind has infiltrated 
all things because it creates all things in creation, but it is under the guidance and under the power of you, the soul. And so that mind gets its power, but it in of itself is a body of itself that can dominate the consciousness to the point where you forget totally. And that's the idea, of course, that you forget who's the viewer uh, through the mental apparatus of thought. And so once you understand to break that thought pattern and you become that which is the observer of thought, that which feeds thought, then it's a whole nother ball game in awarenesses and it's a whole nother ball game in what you just did to your next journey and where you're going to go. That's the point. For those of you that are older, uh, essential to get yourself in line like kind of that way and play with this and get more into the now and understanding who you are uh, beyond the mind because your next adventure would be you know you can really uh, get yourself into some extremely high levels of creation or out of it into and I won't go into that into some things you would really really uh, amazing amazing stuff and uh, so it, it is it's all good. It's all so beautiful and all so good. And I think that it would love to walk around the planet and, and, and see that happening. But I'm going to try to get as many uh, Q&As done uh, as I can. But you notice that each letter or each uh, question that you have, I think, uh, uh, is, is essential for a lot of people to to. Un to get the question and the answer both. I, I, I think when you, uh, you look at the universal mind, that when you have a question, there's probably thousands that have the same question. Mm -hmm. So anything that you bring up, I think, is relative to everyone, or certainly a bunch of people that are suffering similarly. So even though I can't get to all of these questions, I'm hoping that... Uh, there's enough there that'll help you to understand. Outside of that, I want you to understand that this is so simple that it makes the mind scream. It's so simple to understand how you get well. Maybe not to do it, but to understand it. And I think understanding, not intellectually, understanding, seeing the picture of the two sides of chemistry, the cells that make up all the tissues in the body, the blood feeding the cells, the lymph cleaning the waste from the cells, seeing that simplicity of that. Then, in the spiritual side of that, seeing the simplicity of how creation is put together, because the complexities could never be understood through the mind. You can't understand consciousness through the mind. Thought and consciousness are two different things. And so, um, you know, the, this is um, something that one has to become aware of, is who one really is in the context of thought and emotions and the physical machine. And then everything is in its proper perspective. And then getting the bodies healthy is just a matter of an action and understanding that action uh, there's a shout out here to Dwayne Bond from North Carolina. I see uh, Dwayne and Sarah, you're kicking butt there. How you doing now? Uh, trying to avoid dialysis there, uh, you know, and that's important. Uh, BP readings were 11, uh, 10. This goes way back. This is an older one here. But uh, all you guys keep up the great work that you're doing. I just, uh, I'm hearing all kinds of fan fantastic, incredible journeys that you guys are going on and what you're doing and what you're creating. Some of you are creating spas, detox spas. A lot of you are at healing centers. Just all the different things that are going on. So exciting. And I know I can speak for myself. I would have loved when I was 20 to wake up to what you guys have available at this point. Uh, I would have loved that, to have someone uh, doing videos and really helping to, to take those next steps without you know, saving me a lot of time and a lot of uh, uh, ups and downs and going through things that maybe I didn't have to go through. You know, that's the whole point of, 
of those that tread before is is just saying look out for that hole over there if you walk that way you're liable to fall in you know and that that's you know it's the same thing as if you ever wanted something real bad and you wanted it but it just wasn't happening just this just all the circumstances wasn't happening and you were pushing and you were pushing and you were pushing all the doors and suddenly you made it happen for yourself right and then you realize whoops i wish and wished i hadn't made it happen because it wasn't what you thought it was and the experience wasn't good you know i've learned years ago don't push on a door that doesn't want to open you don't want to do that don't push on a door even though you don't know and sometimes you can't see because you know that's part of the problem with becoming totally detached and living in the now is getting away from your concepts of things your ideals of things and the mind is so subtle whoo think about that as you work on becoming more and living in the moment enjoying every moment for that moment who cares about the next moment you're having fun right now I don't want to be in all this time tracks uh, in pieces of me down the road. I want to totally be in this ever-present moment and enjoy that moment. And then that leads to the next moment, leads to the next moment, leads to the next moment. But I'm always present. If I'm living in the present moment and enjoying that moment, I have all that I need. If my mind is going on a journey, then I have these in sequences that I have to catch up to. Because the mind can go way on down the road and create things down the road for yourself. That's some of the understanding of how you create your next journey and where you're going to be in your next journey offside this planet, Earth. Okay, well, Dr. Morris, I wanted to thank you for being such... Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Who is this? This is Tina. Hi, Tina. Uh, and Linda, yes, you can. Uh, here's my question. I'm a 32-year-old female diagnosed with uterine fibroids several years ago. I have no children and, uh, and have been having a hard time conceiving a couple of years ago. And, you know, I might say that it's easy in our field to get a woman to conceive. It's so easy. I look at all these... Uh, these uh, fertilization clinics and stuff like this and test tube baby things, so to speak. And I look at that and say, it's easy to get a woman to conceive. Conception is one thing. Then holding full term is another. And then producing a, a part of, you know, your physical selves, uh, another body for another soul that's riddled with the same weaknesses that you couldn't conceive from. Because we increased your pituitary and your ovarian functions to conception, and then, uh, and then, uh, but you didn't, you know, people don't fix them. You can, you can get a woman to conceive easy. So the big problem with conception, nine times out of ten, is always the pituitary. These are women that are estrogenic, typically. These are women that have excessive bleeding and menses, uh, this sort of thing. Their, their menses are regular, and therefore they abort easy. Um, uh, these women end up with DNCs sometimes. So these are the sort of things that the pituitary is key. I would, if I'm having difficulty conceiving, I'd be on the female reproductive formula for a couple of months. And I would also be on a pituitary glandular for maybe one bottle and see if I can't pick up with the female reproductive and let that bring my pituitary in order with understanding that the, that the transverse colon is always linked to the head, then I would be cleaning up my bowels knowing that there's a, a relationship from the embryonic stages till now of the lower part to the upper part. <laughs> you know, the head to the tail. So all these things are totally symbiotic related and electrically and uh, magnetically related. So by, by working on the pituitary is one thing, but you must work on the GI tract too. And I tell you, if the iridology ever helped us with anything, is to show us all the relationships and how everything is related. You can push on a nerve here and feel it running down your legs. 
I mean, we are neurologically surrounded and, and, and hooked all through our bodies, connected. That's why with reflexology, you can pull people out of cardiac arrest, done it three times. You can do all kinds of things with just using your thumb and these neural reflex points. You know, turning on that nervous system. So the health of the nervous system is everything and the autonomic one. But it's also, you have two nervous systems, both need to be healthy. One's a hard drive central nervous system, the other makes everything happen for you. And that's the autonomic, sympathetic, parasympathetic, the duality, the movement. That's why duality, that's why two sides, up, down, teeter-totter stuff. Push-pull. Breathe in, breathe out. That sort of thing. So, that's the first thing when you come to something like that with conceiving. And you want to spend some time because when you conceive, you want the best child you can have. You've got to stop and be smart about children and not have them out of emotional needs. That's the worst thing that's happened to people is they've had children out of emotional needs. And who can speak about that? My first son out of emotional needs. First, uh, my child, my uh, high school sweetheart, you know, and that's, you know, that, that's some of the things you do without understanding. When we have a higher order, understand the genetics and how to repair them as you guys are, you can then spend a short period of time and, and be building that body for that next, your body, so the next child will have a healthy body. And this, this soul can come in and actually have a healthy body and not be locked into medical thinking. Because remember, in most of the world, not all of the world, thank God, in most of the world, they'll grab your baby from you. And this country has just gone insane. They'll grab your baby no matter what. If your baby's sick, you don't have a choice. And this is a bad, bad thing in this country. Some of you that have been working with us and runners know what I mean. It's just sad stuff, you know. And they'll, they, you know, it, it's also, I mean, when you look at it through the, um, the government and what they've done creating bastard children uh, by using the maiden name of the mom and the real name of the dad, and then uh, and using bond paper, you notice all your uh, birth certificates now are on bond paper as well as your social security number. Uh, just a little uh, dropping of find out what bond paper is and what that means to the government and who, what you really are to the government. Remember the old Tennessee Ernie Ford song, uh, working for the company or something like that? Uh, I owe my soul to the company store. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I went to the ER for a pain in my lower pelvis. They ran a CAT scan. Yikes. Now I know better. I know, but you never know. You know, that's the problem. Now they've got, I heard, digital CAT scans, which uh, radiation is much, much less. But imagine going having one scan and you had as much, much uh, exposure to radiation as, what, 180 or 200 uh, x-rays? That's friggin' scary. Did they tell? They've had to know the damaged tissue matter. In fact, I think it was one that Sloan or one of them, when they first were introduced to radiation therapy. I think it was Sloan. It could have been someone else. They turned it down, claiming that it damaged tissue too much. Now you can get as much radiation as you can pay for. You see, there was a time when ethics ruled this 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 country and and the world, and that. You would never think of hurting someone like that. Now it doesn't matter. It's about the money. Like when Monsanto knows better than to GMO its foods. It knows it is. But its ego won't let it back up. Its ego won't let it stop. That's an ego. Out of control. Narcissism. Intellectualism. You have to be real careful with all those things. They don't merge together and you lose your way. You know? So, uh, and determined it was an ovarian cyst. So immediately with an ovarian cyst, you know, when you start to see boils, pimples, cysts, tumors, polyps, uh, nodules, these are all lymphatic things. These are not blood clots. These are lymph clots, if you want to use that terminology. These are lymph sacs. 
These are sacs of interstitial fluid because there's not a free movement of interstitial fluid. Whenever You don't form a pocket or a storage tank or a polyp or a tumor or a cyst or anything like this unless there is a blockage to the flow of fluid because these are pockets of fluids. You know, a lot of people don't understand the difference between cancer and a tumor. And a tumor is simply a pocket of fluid. What kind of fluid do you think could possibly be in a tumor? Because when you look in the body, you have blood, you've got lymph, and you've got sewage coming from cells and parasites breaking down the sewage. So what is a, what is a pocket? And the problem is it's an acid sewage pocket. That's the problem. That's why these tumors can get hard as a rock. And uh, these are acids. These are not alkalis. These are acids from the cell's waste. And uh, th this all has to, has to be filtered, but isn't getting filtered. And it's easy to understand that. Generally, a, 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 a river flows good as long as there's no blockage down below. As soon as there's a blockage, then the river rises up over the dams and then whoever's uh, around gets wet. In the uh, scan, they also found a growth on my liver they called FNH, follicle nodular hyperplasia. Oh, Jesus. You know, I, I mean, this just shows you, though, sweetheart, not only is your lymph not filtering in your, through though that ovary well, it's not filtering in the liver well. But wait a minute. Isn't this fluid all through us? Exactly. So that we would use the word systemic. So this is a systemic problem. So that means you, if your flood's backing up all over the place, we need to find where this, where this blockage is. Where could this blockage be? Could it be in the liver? Well, wait a minute. We got another one in the ovary. Well, wait a minute. How is that linked? You see what I'm saying? You understand that we have systemic floods that feed and clean all the cells head to toe. That would be in the order of things. A natural understanding of how things are put together and works. Because all things consume and eliminate waste. Plants do it, animals do it, universes do it. Everything does it. Consumption and elimination. We need to focus on elimination because of the consumption of all the high proteins and dairy products have ruined the eliminative organs. All the grains. So now we have the black mucoid plaque all through the bowels that medical doctors claim herbs are. You see what I'm saying? But medical doctors, and, and I know I'm on the medical community a lot, but they're on us for years. And a lot of my cohorts just flatly hated them because of the trouble that they gave us for years, wanting to throw us in jail, wanting to do all kinds of things from us. Because we're the healers without us this world would implode on itself. I think it was Ted Turner and um, a bunch of scientists and chemists got together and they said at the current death rate, by year 2025, no more humans on the planet. That's because, that's if there was no intervention by the beautiful souls of you guys. Without you guys and the moms and the dads that are of care for their children and are making them healthy, we would lose the species. But, you know, the species is a violent species at this time. Hopefully the spirituality that you guys are opening up to this world and we're bringing into this world and all the other spiritual beings that are helping us, they, we, we can open this up. Uh, they told me it's nothing to worry about unless it hurts. Oh, <laughs> well, you're getting a big cyst or tumor on your ovary, but it's okay. That's no big deal unless it hurts. I stopped taking my oral birth control around that time because they suggested excess estrogen is to blame. Uh, my gynecologist, of course, denied it was the birth control pill that could be the cause and suggested surgically removing my fibroids. Yeah, I mean, we could surgically remove everything that becomes hardened or, or polyps on it because the lymph isn't moving well through it. We could do that. So we could take most women and literally cut off their breasts, cut out their uterus and ovaries, and we'd be in good shape. Oh, God. Ugh. Can you speak about the connection between the liver and fibroids? 
I was also wondering if you could offer any spiritual insight regarding infertility. Well, that's a good question on that one. Because my particular take is there are some people meant to bring forth souls into this planet and there's others that are not. I don't think it's the duty of every soul in a, in a, in a female body to bring forth life from uh, another world. I mean, from, you know, from consciousness or bringing a soul to this planet in that way. The spirituality of it is hard to say, you know, hard to say the karma involved in that and what that means if you can't conceive spiritually other than maybe it's a time that's for yourself. In other, other ways, uh, perhaps that the genetics are at the point that it would not be to your advantage to bring forth a child and it would affect your spiritual growth if you did just by the suffering that could take place. Uh, pituitary down like that, you could have a child with extreme stunted growth, uh, uh, one that has a, a lot of nerve uh, issues and there could be other issues in you. Of course, the kidneys and adrenals, remember, uh, Tina, is always involved here. Those are the eliminative organs. Those are the eliminative organs that have been damaged through these high protein diets, these high grain, which is acidic too, all this acidosis of the body. All this lifestyle that man has led, because there's nothing else that man has done. This is all one's lifestyle. When you look at the suffering of man, the thing that the, the slickness of medical thinking is that, oh, don't worry about it, it's not your fault. This is a disease. Right. It's all our faults. You know, we came in, and I'm going to tell you, you came in. When you came into your body, you already knew. You already knew what problems you were going to have. You already knew what you were going to through. I'm telling you, you already know. That's why you have these little clips of deja vu, because you already know. I can tell you, by the time a soul moves in here at the higher level, it already knows everything that it's going to experience happy about it because it, it's going to help free them unless that soul gets trapped again and it takes them deeper and then locks them into a karmatic move forward, you know. So this is time to be free. Even for females that can't conceive, maybe it's time for you to let go of this world and this planet that you don't have to conceive. Uh, however, I believe in making everything healthy in case you wanted to. But one does, does not have to bring forth that into this planet. I still say that we're overpopulated as a race. And look around. The jobs are hard to find. There's people everywhere. I feel sorry for the young ones coming forth because it just doesn't look really well. Now, it could be that uh, you know all the spiritual infusion that's going on here could uplift the next uh, people in, or in power all around the world. I don't know. I don't see... Uh, that sort of change coming, you know. There's been uh, discussion of whether Atlantis and Lemuria went down overnight or took thousands of years. I'll go for the thousands of years, if not hundreds. Uh, okay, uh, connection of liver and fibroids. Uh, good question. I don't know of any relationship between the liver and fibroids. Uh, I, I don't think it's the liver's place. Uh, if you study the liver, the first thing that comes to your mind is chemical manufacturing plant. Chemical manufacturing plant where chemistry is constantly being uh, biologically transmutated from one chemical constituent to another. Glucose you know, to glycogen, back to glucose, that sort of thing, converting silica to calcium. There is some thought that amino acids, some of them are formed through glucose. That's a stretch uh, because you got a high carbon unit and then you got a high nitrogen unit. So I don't know, you know, it, it's, it, 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 it's just an amazing, amazing organ. And I call it a chemical manufacturing plant. A lot of people call it a detoxifying organ, and I'd like to know how. I don't see the liver transmutating arsenic and lead and mercury into other constituents. I don't see that. I see its main focus is how it takes the chemistry that comes through the bowels and deals with that before you get it to the heart. And so, uh,
some ways, I think it's there to transmutate as much as it can for protective devices. But, you know, if you take a look, uh, it, it hasn't done that to man. Man is sick. Uh, by eating high-protein diets and things like that, you don't see the liver coming in and dealing with that absorbed chemistry from the intestines, how that converted that and buffered that and saved the body from that. I don't see that because you still get acidosis as you run it through there. So I, I don't see where we think the liver as a detoxifying organ. That, 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 that's beyond me. I think when you talk about a, a detoxifying organ, it'd be better if you put an elimination organ, an organ of elimination. Because basically the organs of elimination take care of the filtration and the movement of sewage out of the body. So when you look at the urinary tract system, I think that has to also include the lymphatic system in that. Because I think it's one big gigantic system. You know, and tied to the skin as well. So the elimination of waste. When you take a look at the elimination of digestive waste through the colon, not not including absorption of nutrients, you can, you can say that pretty well defined. You got a five foot uh, colon, pretty much, and a twenty two foot small bowel. So pretty much, you can see elimination uh, the way digestive waste go. But and, and the, the bowel isn't that big. But when you see the two kidneys and the skin, which is the third kidney, and the amount of space that the skin deals with, and the amount of elimination of waste that the skin deals with, it becomes quite apparent that, uh, uh, that this system's huge. And it's also apparent when you understand acids, the vital role of bacterium. In the process of breaking down these acids in the lip nodes, and even further, I mean, even subcutaneously, we can be loaded. Who knows? I know that some people are so backed up lymphatically subcutaneously that the concern would be the flesh-eating virus which I, or bacteria, which I don't think flesh-eating has nothing to do with it. People uh, subcutaneously, right under the epidermis and right under the skin, sometimes is backed up like sewage waiting to explode. Look at the psoriasis, the acne, the, the dermatitis. I mean, it's all one thing. I mean, we have all these names for sewage coming through the skin and the level of damage the skin has acquired from that as opposed to acne, as opposed to psoriasis, as opposed to dermatitis. All levels, but of the same thing, basically. I mean, we can play in the different bacteriums of the world and everything else, but they're all there exactly to do the job they need to do for the sewage they needed to deal with. There's different bacterium for different sewages. So you have a whole host of bacterium for different levels, for iron breaking down, uh, for carbohydrate uh, breaking down, carbon, uh, nitrogen. You have just different bacteriums for these things. It's the nature of God. Uh, I think it's incredible. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I think just because we don't understand it. Uh, also, I have been seeing 1111, I know, all over the place. I don't know. My personal feeling is it stands for individuality and the self, but a oneness with all of the selves. You know, us all handing, standing together, but individually, alone, which is God. But together is also God as the one. So I don't know, it's amazing. Everywhere and I feel it means I have some growing and healing to do before I can bring new life into the world. I think it also means that we're coming together as one, all of us. And if you look at our site, we have a very impressive site. We have impressive uh, beings. All of you guys are impressive to me. You're asking great questions. You guys are helping others. I think that it means that we are becoming the one or God's becoming the one again. Uh, with the individuality in, in mind. So I think it's definitely a spiritual, because all, all, most of the spiritual people are seeing 1111 everywhere they look. I think it's incredible. I keep looking at that, trying to get a, a higher view of that, but I, you know, I see it everywhere myself. Uh, Mutt sees it everywhere as himself. All the spiritual guys do. But wanted to hear from your insight on the matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, sweetheart, Tina. I love you, honey. Yeah, you know, I think we're all merging and becoming that one beautiful energetic consciousness. It's just incredible. I get 
cold chills thinking about it, you know, goosebumps basically. Subject, what causes snoring? Answer, mucus. You know, <laughs> congestion, period. The more milk and dairy and, and complex sugars and proteins, the more mucus you have, the more you go to snore. And the next step is what? Sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. Clean out your esophagus and your sinuses and guess what? No more snoring and no more sleep apnea. I mean, it's that simple. It's just friggin' congestion. Get rid of that. Clean your head out, clean your esophagus out, get the bowels cleaned up, and no more snoring. Guaranteed. Could one still be on an alkaline diet in green and fruit juicing? Absolutely. What herbs should be used? Now, is this about snoring? If that's true, you'd start on a detox program. Just think about it. You're going to get into the kidneys. Congestion, mucus, how does it get into you? From the mucosa. Mucosa, this mucosa <coughs> has mucus. Why? What's that mucus for? And what, why do certain foods create it and other foods clean it out? You know? So, if you've ever eaten a lot of foods like dairy products that create it, you really want to start eating foods that clean it out. Because who wants to be congested? I feel a little of that today. Oh, there's so much going on. I had a good friend leave the planet. And I've had all kinds of things going on the last couple of days. Would never accept any help. He's an alcoholic. Good friend, though. You know, some souls don't like it here. Don't know what to say. Take another journey and go have some fun. If you don't like it here, very few people, when they wake up, like it here. Because of so much beauty and, and, and experiences in higher levels. It's so much more nirvanic and so much more love and not violent. And this is a real violent place to be. So you'd go right down the line, cleaning yourself out. But you always want to clean, when you're thinking of your head, you always want to clean your GI tract out. Remember, this is sitting up on top of the GI tract. The mouth to, to, to butt. <laughs> so all that, you've just got to clean it out. But, but, the two kidneys here, the three kidneys, that's another thing. It's essential order. And pull this out. You can chew on some horseradish root or something like that. <laughs> That'll get you moving. You know, but uh, do some neti potting if you want. Uh, lungs formula uh, to help clean. Uh, three lung tea. Anything like that. Go out and hug someone that's sick. Go out uh, bare naked in the cold. Any way you can promote a cold and flu-like symptom. <laughs> and you really get rid of that stuff. I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, that's, that's the journey here. Clean thy body out of the sewage you put in. You know, and a lot of people don't realize that certain foods are just flat-out mucus for me. Look at Arnold Errett, wrote extensively on that. Gave man a great insight and gave it way back when. So man is just, you know, a lot of you have read them. And uh, Arnold Errett such a, was, was such a great soul while he was here. Opened up a lot about fruititarianism. Carrington, you can get books on Carrington. He was a fruititarian thinker, I believe. There's a lot of great docs that were fruititarian thinkers. Not saying that the application of that is, is, it can be done at a level like this, and particularly in countries where you can't get the good foods, but certainly those in the tropics can become great fruititarians. But in the northern climates, at least a, a large part or predominant part of your food should be fruits, berries, and melons, and then salads if you want, things like that. If you're detoxing, though, remember that's a special time. Detox isn't like the everyday eating, although if you... If you can get there and have the self-discipline, it is. You know, It's just that fruits will detoxify you to the limit that they have, which is almost totally. That's just each food has the ability to take you so far into the world of cleansing and health. For frugivores like the homo sapien and primate, fruit takes you the furthest, especially in the neurological needs that, that primates and humans have. These are the foods that do this. This is why those of you that are working on MS and, and Lou Gehrig's and Parkinson's and spinal cord injuries and, you know, maybe Bell's palsy, cerebral palsy, any of these things, it's all neurologically gifted. You know that the fruits and the berries are the key foods for the nervous system. Uh, if I can say this, vegetables are not good neurological foods. And if you all are, those of you that are working with this, with MS and everything, if you feel like you've reached a plateau, you've got to let go of the vegetable kingdom for a while. 
until you can get way out there. And then, you know, you can revisit it, no big deal. But while you're in the process of regeneration, how interesting is it that it requires this high magnetic, high nutritional input to man's nervous system to rebuild it? And so when you see that as a practitioner, you start to look at why these, like Miami Projects and all these places that are working on spinal cord injuries, have no success. They're trying to force growth through electronics or something else, and it's like, no. No, the body, the body is a healer. body likes to heal itself. And the body will heal, run new neural or vascular pathways. Your body does all kinds of neat things. You know, if it needs a new pathway, it'll make one. You know, and so that's cool stuff. If you could live after an MI, you buy, you would find your your uh, um, uh, your vascular system in the heart uh, will will actually grow new 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 pathways. So the coronary arteries will will grow, and it's just that sort of thing. It's it's the beauty of of the need of life to to express itself, and and to and to continually be in in, in a situation of flux and activity. Uh, my mom's sister at the time, born 1913, wow, can't have children. They did all what was available, like blood tests, you know, regular Western hospital clinic like Kaiser Clinics Hospital. My uncle Henry had passed away over 40 years ago, and my Aunt Viola just passed away in the 1990s. Aunt Vi just hated where she was being taken care of in her 80s, so pissed there was no real help. Stupid city. Interesting comments you have there, Debbie. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, thanks, sweetheart. Uh, you know what? Yeah. It's just, then you realize nothing dies, guys. Just realize nothing passes. And they, there's so much that you can experience and have fun and going into these worlds. Oh, my God. From this world alone. So the journey spiritually is worth it for all of you guys. Even those that, you know, you don't have to have a belief system. Matter of fact, it's almost better if you don't believe in God and just look around. It doesn't take long to become a believer if you just look around and look at the planet. Not know what man's done. Look at what nature's done. Amazing stuff. And the fact that man's a part of that and the mind comes out of that and what man, is, and what man has created. The Dick Tracy effect. Pretty cool stuff. But remember, this is positive and negative, one of the lowest ends of that. So you have the good, but then you have the death, the killing, the, the hatred, the gossiping. You have, you have the negative side at the heels of the positive. That's why these, the higher worlds, if I could use that, that, that definition, the higher worlds, they have less negative, more positive. It's just a thrill. So much more of a thrill to experience, and it's just amazing. Well worth uh, taking time to contemplate and to get a hold of the mind and stuff like that. It's well worth the, the time to do that, because there's only so much you can experience here. And being very confined in a high material, basically inert compared to the, the, the movement that mind can do and soul can do, uh, you know, Big difference. But thanks for that. Yeah. Dr. Morris, my housemate is a avid fan of yours. Oh, that's neat. And encourage me to write this email. Okay. I would most grateful if you could review my case. Okay, so let's look at this case, guys. She's a 33-year-old woman. 33, young woman, five foot tall, blonde hair, and blue eyes. The fact she's got blue eyes is exciting because you know that at least she hasn't got blue eyes in their brown or blue eyes in their hazel, so that's exciting right off. The five foot tells you, ma'am, you know what? I even in other cultures, I still think that we're looking at a little bit of a pituitary here already. I weigh 57 kilos. I keep physically fit. I also smoke 10 to 15 cigarettes per day. No, 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 no. I live in the north of Scotland. Whew. I have suffered from allergies, uh-huh, all my life. Chronic hay fever since I was a child. Allergies to animals and certain foods. Stop right there. Now, for you guys in the know, what system is down in this lady? The blood? No. We're back to the lymph again. 
I've never seen anybody with any allergy on the planet you didn't clean it, the lymph system out, the sewer department where all these chemical particles will build up and you reach a saturation point and then you get allergic to these things. And it can be anything. Just the same thing getting allergic to penicillin or allergic to sulfur drugs or anything. You have too much in you. Iodine, too much in you. And the system that has to deal with that is the lymph system. The blood, it can clean itself. As much as it, you know, until a certain point, it's got a, a liver and a spleen it can count on. But this is the lymphatic problem, honey, and this is uh, kidney and adrenals all the way down the, the, the world. And if the skin isn't sweating, then you can throw your thyroid in on that mix. With the, with, with the uh, five foot, I'm going to say that the possibility of having a pituitary weakness is strong. So here we go. We got pituitary down to the thyroid, down to the adrenals. Also have mild asthma, normally seasonal. So already, now look at the difference. There's a difference between pneumonia, which is basically mucus and congestion from dairy products and complex sugars and things like that. Once you get your bodies cleaned out, you will know immediately what foods are mucus forming and what foods are not because you'll get a lot of mucus when you eat things that your body doesn't want. And that mucus has got to either come out, <coughs> excuse me, or it's going to stay, and nobody likes when mucus hangs around, because then you can't spike very good, and you can't talk very good, and you've got a lot of breathing problems. But anyway, this asthma, sweetheart, is a neurological connection. It'll take you back to your adrenal glands again, and your myelin sheath, and your autonomic nervous system. So the adrenals, and this ties right back to allergies too, and low steroids there as well. So you want to grab into the adrenals kidneys, you want to start moving that limb system, clean out the bowels. Get on the endocrine glands, work on your endocrine glands, hit the pituitary, get a picture of your eyes would be a good idea. Look at the transverse bowel and see if that pituitary, see if that's sitting up in a chronic way. You want to go after that. She has an inhaler here, salbuterol, never heard of that one. You got albuterol, you got all kinds of, most of these have been dubbed cancer causing because they, they're, they're, they act as an antispasmodic, but they, they, they're, they're inhibitors. You want an antispasmodic for all of you that have asthma or some form of COPD all the way up to full blown. I like to use the herbal antispasmodics because they don't have the suppressive action that pharmaceutical inhalers have. So what it does is an antispas herbal antispasmodic will relax the nervous system, feed it a little bit, and at the same time allow you to cough up and get rid of all the congestion. And some of this, the longer you keep this mucus in the lungs, the harder it gets and the more locked in it gets and the more scarring can occur to the lungs because this is acids. So you want to bring forth an expectoration. Learning how to breathe correctly is vital as well. You notice if you start deep breathing enough, you'll start to cough up some mucus. So we know that oxygen and carbon and all that helps to break up mucus. So remember, don't breathe thoracically. We've talked about this before. Breathe abdominally. When you take your first breath, you want your abdominal muscle to move. You don't want your, your shoulders to move or a thoracic to move. You want your lower abdominal muscles to move. So when you take your first breath, you want to go like that. You're, you want to pull it into the lower lobes by breathing down in the abdominal area. And then you can go like this. You can go first, which breathes here, and then you're taking your next and huge, you're full. All lobes are full. Three on right, two on left. But you want to go after those adrenal glands in all these cases, especially with any uh, COPD, because there's your little problem in terms of the neurological feed to the adrenals. So you really want to get your kidneys and adrenals back in order, start cleansing, clean up the GI tract, and then you're going to have a healing crisis in the lungs. And you're going to feel like you got pneumonia, and you're going to put, spit up a lot of mucus. Going to go from clear to yellow to green to probably brown and black, if you dig deep enough. 
And you're going to get stuff out of you, especially the smokers and all. You're going to get black, tarry stuff out of the lungs. You're going to you're going to get rid of a lot of nasty stuff. And you don't have to be a smoker to get out the black, tarry stuff out of the lungs. But most of those that are do get the black, tar, thick stuff out of the lungs. Seen it a lot. And uh, that's what you want, though. When you start getting this black, tarry stuff out of the lungs, you start realizing what's up. You start going, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. I get uh, severe prickly heat in the sun. Uh, these symptoms have not really improved with the diet changes. Well, I'll say that you really need to dig in probably, sweetheart. It's one thing to change the diet, but you've got to use that now to detox yourself deeper. Get your skin sweating. Get your kidneys filtering. Get this lymph moving. So acid on top of base, you'll like it. Acid on top of acid, we don't like that. So when you're acidic, and the sun is acidic, of course, you're going to burn. And you're, you could break down cells because that's acid on top of acid. Now, here's what amazes me. In the medical community, we'll say be aware of the sun because it can burn you. Not when you're alkaline, it can't. When you're basically alkaline or more base dominant, you will love the sun. You will bathe in the sun. But when you're highly acidic, you will, you will burn like crazy. That's acid on top of acid. Now, let's take that same understanding, acid on top of acid, and let's apply it to cancer, which is a highly acid involvement in the body, which has broken down or mutated cells. So we know that we have intracellular acidosis. Therefore, we have to understand that we have extracellular acidosis first, and then intracellular acidosis. So what we have is acidosis. So then when you take a look at chemotherapy, which most chemotherapy now is somewhere between battery acid and hydrochloric acid. I'll admit it's closer probably to hydrochloric acid in today's world than it was battery acid in the older days, how it got its name in nursing as, as uh, Drano. Uh, you know, these aren't just happen chances that, that you put acid on top of acid. So now here we have a medical community putting an acid like nobody's business, an acid that breaks down flesh, because hydrochloric acid breaks down flesh, right? I mean, that's what you eat is flesh, and it breaks down flesh, animal flesh, same flesh, breaks down flesh, which is cells, all right? They give you this chemotherapy to treat an already acid condition. Acid on top of acid only exacerbates acidosis. This is criminal. This is insane. And I, even when I think about it, I go off sometimes because it's like they need to be stopped. There's plenty of other ways to bring children and humans and adults back from that world. And it's just insane. This is the, why it's such a killing machine right now. It's insane. But we're doing our best for the humanity and to save these poor souls that got cancer. you got to wake up to that one. That is the biggest trap that's ever been. And they've trapped men's emotions, especially the mothers, trapped their emotions to the point they do anything they want with their kids. It's a sickening, 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 sickening. So, get your body alkaline. This is what you have to do, sweetheart. You got to get your, you get your body more alkaline. And it's a job to do. You're 33 years old. You want to get in there. You want to dig in. You use your eyes. Get those, and, and look at your lymph system and clean it up. And get to where the body just loves the sun, like the flowers. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so good. Also, I've just started suffering from another problem for about the past six months. Every time I menstruate now on the third day I start to suffer from a severe throbbing pain at the entrance of my vaginal area and uh, it then gets very swollen and burns okay so this isn't good well it just shows you're so acidic that uh, when you have your menses uh, you of course that's estrogen now the pH of estrogen I never did get an answer on that but my guess we're looking at somewhere around five my guess is it's not a burn, burn, burn estrogen, but it will. So, but when you mix an acid in with even hotter acids like lymph, you, you tend to ignite the fire. There's no question. So when medical doctors say this is an estrogen-fed cancer, what they don't understand is, oh, no, you're already acidic. You're already interstitially acidic. The cells are already getting beat up, and you just have another minor acid coming in and adding fuel to the fire. 
It's not as hot as the acids that are causing the, the, the damaged cells in the first place. Estrogen isn't 3 pH. But look at chemo. And then here we have, we have the audacity of a science that says we're going to give you Rumidex, which according to Worth Health Organization is cancer causing, is a carcinogen. Yeah, we're going to give it to you as an estrogen blocker or anything else like that. There's a couple other ones, tamoxifen, Rumidex, things like that. And we're going to give you that as an estrogen blocker, but we're going to give you chemo. I mean, if it wasn't such a killing machine, you'd almost laugh at the stupidity of, of the science behind that. And, you, and people run to that. I, 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 just, I, just, I, I find it just totally unscientific, totally bizarre, totally unrational. I find it just totally way out there. And the more you guys understand this, you'll join me with it going, what is going on here? But this is another thing I would do and you ladies, you know, as you get built up in the vaginal wall with acids and stuff, you start popping atypical cells, you can get down by the vulva, you can, get, you can really burn yourself and atrophy yourself. Again, I would take the Heal All Tea, I would douche for a couple of weeks with that, I'd get my kidneys filtering, sweetheart, get my adrenals up, of course, get this lymph moving. I, you could even take that Heal All Tea and use a sanitary napkin and put it up against the uh, skin there and, and let that tea start drawing and healing. You can do that, but you want to take care of this because you're heading to the bovidine or you know these type of problems where you have constant pain in the female area there and that is no more fun so this is a problem where you want to fix this it's plenty of great souls that have had to go through that like Rita has pulled herself away from that the suffering that these souls had to do karma whatever okay but we can fix these things and we can run out the karma and da 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 and we've got a way to do these things you don't sit there and wallow anything. So you've got to fix this, sweetheart, and get this done because the way you're heading, you're getting more acidic and more acidic as you get older, and you're only 33. To have this problem at 33 can be very serious for you. And so all the cervical cancers, vaginal wall cancers, I've had women with tumors on the vaginal wall. That's not fun. Uh-uh. And then pain all in the uh, uh, vaginal area there, not fun. And uh, not fun for males either, for, for they have problems too, you know. It then uh, gets very swollen and burns, also suffering from severe stabbing pains. Yeah, not good. So, again, you've got to, again, know this is, know you're having systemic problems all over you. Know that there's, the fluids are systemic. The cells are stuck where they are. The fluids are systemic. And therefore, you're having the fluids that deal with the acid side of chemistry with the lymphatic fluids, which deal with the sewage of the cells. You're having that backing up everywhere and in places that are not fun to have it back up and that's why you got to get yourself filtering in the kidneys and get your lymph moving because you're headed for some not so fun the skin also starts coming away from inside the vagina holy crap honey no 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 I have had a thrush in the past and it is nothing like this no 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 you're deteriorating your cells that's what acids do. They deteriorate. So you might even want to put some baking soda or something on the front there or some comfrey salve. Now we've got some comfrey salve. My old salves are coming back. They're making them now. You're going to love those salves because to me, I've never seen people make dark green salves like we do. They, they're, they, they're light and it's like, what? You got herbs in here? You know, when you see my salves, they're rich and dark. And do they work? So this would be a nice place for some comfrey salves, heal all salves, things like that. Definitely want to think about that. And I would start putting that on there, maybe a little inside too, because you you just want to heal and neutralize those acids before you get more atrophy going on at the cellular level. None of this is fun. And like I said, I would turn around and use some of these things I'm talking about. When my period finishes, I am still getting pieces of skin coming away for two days. Oh, honey, nothing seems to ease it. I thought I had an allergic to tampons, so started using a moon cup. And I have also, no, 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 you can go to the pads and everything else. No, 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 no. This is your body. This is systemic. This is inside your body burning outward. And this isn't good. This also did not help, and it's not going to. Epiderm cream. No, 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 no. You want 
herbal creams. They're the healers. Get the herbal creams, comfrey, golden seal, things like that will really help to heal this up. But you can't heal it up with just the sounds. Remember, they're going to be temporary and on the surface. You're burning from the inside out. And you've got to get in there. And the only way to get in there is to get to the eliminative organs that deal with that system that's inside everywhere. Unless you come up with something else, let me know. Uh, soothes the burning slightly and alongside antihistamines, which I do not like taking. I was tested for my doctor for all basic vaginal infections. Oh, give me a break. Da -da 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 -re, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Of course they came back negative. It has nothing to do with any of that. You're not dirty. You're not anything like that at all. This is your own limp system in your body down. Common stuff. And you're 30, which is common. This is, I mean, the doctor also thought my vag, uh, vagina, I thought my uh, exam was normal. It sometimes feels like I'm allergic to my own period. <laughs> well, it's just acid on top of acid, sweetheart. Once it settles down, it goes back to normal. No pain. da 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 da, -da. Also, I had to get a regular colonoscopy, no, coposcopes, and uh, received loop treat. Oh, but I have been now clear for two years from the uh, gyna clinic, GYN clinic, and all smears are normal now. Won't be. Nothing stays the same, sweetheart, unless you fix it. Acids are acids. And nothing stays the same. So you've got to get in and fix this problem. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia over 10 years ago. So right there, right there, you guys, fibromyalgia, systemic, that's pain in the muscles, fibromyalgia, right? Why? Systemic acidosis. Always, always, always. And you, this diagnosis just told you that you were backed up everywhere acidically uh, in the lymph system. And you're just seeing that in the female areas, but it's all through you. Your heart, your lungs, how about your brain? And that's why I say this is important stuff. Then I was very sore, unable to sleep or function properly, severe brain fog, and low mood. Also suffered from chronic IBS. Just telling you, my feeling is you're going to find transverse colon problems. See what I'm saying? This is for the Facebook people here. This is a good case to look at here because this is just, she's just telling you what, that she's systemically involved. She's just naming the areas that she's systemically involved at where she's feeling that. Well, doesn't that make sense? You'd have IBS and then here's the transverse colon. Oh, look, pituitary problems. So how that correlates with eyes and everything, it's all cool stuff. This is cool stuff. I would think medical doctors would love this. Anybody that's got a healer heart, is going to love this level of thinking and suffer agitation. However, though, the years I have changed my diet quite a bit, uh, firstly cutting out uh, wheat and low uh, dairy intake, but now for the past year I have been on mostly high raw diet. You better be uh, when at home. As I work away from home on a two-week or three-week off rotation offshore, ugh, it is not very easy. Well, you might want to take what you need offshore. You might want to get fruit. You want to you want to load yourself down here. My normal diet when at home is juices all day. Mainly, oh, good fruit. However, I am trying to introduce more green juices. I have a large salad at night, sometimes with tuna. No, 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 no. Nick, say the tuna. You got to dig in and get this fixed, honey, because uh, you don't have time to wait. You don't have time to play games anymore because you 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 you. Next time you get a GUI in looking down there, it might not be as pretty. You just got to be careful because I know a lot of women that's atrophied the vulva and everything else down there because of this. You just want to get your body back into a base balance, hydrated, and kidneys filtering and bowels clean, pituitaries up, everybody up and running. That, that, that's the bottom line to this. I would nixate the tuna. Uh, I would nixate the amino acids. Uh, I do still have the occasional piece of chocolate. Nah. I do try to eat raw chocolate, and I do still eat the occasional plain crisp. I have herbal teas, including our, our, our heal all tea, and at the most two cups of coffee a day. I take five HTP at night to help with sleep, and take spirulina and corella every day. I nix a on those too. While you're detoxifying, I don't care after that, but while you're detoxifying, nix a on the corella and spirulina. My fibromyalgia symptoms have greatly improved and very rarely suffer from pain now, etc. In general, I feel like I've got my life back. Dig deeper. 
dig deeper because that period and that 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 burning uh, uh dig deeper uh, i did see a food holistic doctor here in scotland she advised supplementing my diet with omega b and c oh my god here we go uh, i'm going to advise uh, the opposite of that because if you take high C's, I don't care about B's, water, soil, boy, in and out, big deal. Although, I've seen a lady, lady where she took synthetic B's and they accumulated in her body. Uh, C complex, uh, remember vitamin C is antagonistic to calcium. The more vitamin C you take, the, less ca the, the more calcium is leached out of the body. Niacin, enzyme or digest, no digestive enzymes, no acidophilus. Stop all that crap. Get yourself on a raw food, fruitarian-like thinking. Detox your body. Get you on some herbs. Get yourself fixed up here, sweetheart. Uh, this uh, holistic doctor is about normal around the world, and they need to get their thinking up a lot higher. Uh, this is not how you get people well, giving them mega Bs and Cs and giving them acidophilus. And, oh, we did that years ago. That was, that, was, that was 40 years ago we did that kind of stuff. And we learned then it didn't work. And we're still doing it. I'm not. Uh, she advised me to cut back on amino acids. Smart. I will agree with that. Only have one a day. Don't have any a day. Uh, and cut out so much fruit juice and have more greens. Disagree with her. Because you're not going to detoxify with more green juices. And savory diet uh, insofar as oat cakes. No. Rice cakes. No. No, 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 no. These are grains. These are acid forming. These are mucus formings. Body doesn't like the proteins and grains. What do you think? That's what I think. Uh, she also advised stopping the spirulina corilla as he uh, human body cannot digest it. Well, I don't know about that. I'd heard that, but I don't recommend them ever anyway. But I don't. I never heard your body couldn't digest them. But single cell organisms, you know, uh, you want to get away from these proteins. And this is Michelle. Lots of love, sweetheart. Take care of yourself, honey, because you 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 got to you got to stop this, and. Uh, Get yourself focused on the right diet. Get yourself high on the fruits. Now, I know it's winter around the globe, but still, do your very best because this is a serious problem you have down below. And uh, this is a real long one, too. Um, all right, so let's, uh, this, we'll make this one kind of a Facebook thing, too. Uh, this is Nadia. Uh, I'm, sweetheart, I'm going to try to go through this fast. When they're long like this, it's just, it's hard for me to spend so much time because I can't get to anybody else. So let me, uh, let me go through this real quick. Uh, due to my family's and my own ill health, I have spent the last six years trying to learn all I can about alternative approaches to disease and healing. Okay, so let me set you straight right there. If you're studying alternative approaches, then you're studying the AMA and it's time to let them go. You know, the problem is, is that we have settled into thinking that the AMA is some type of traditional medicine and that uh, we're something alternative. That's a slap in the face, and I'd like to slap their face back. Medical doctors are alternative. Medical thinking is alternative because it's the most bizarre. It's the most dangerous. It's the most killing of all modalities. When you enter the AMA, you better know what you're doing. And a lot of people just enter that and is thinking it's mainstream. It's not mainstream. It's alternative. They are the ones that uses the tricks. They're the one that uses acid on top of acid. They're the ones that don't understand at all what systemic acidosis, the lymph system, the kidneys, and all that is all about. They don't understand that. And it's not negative on them. They just weren't taught that. And so, and a lot of them didn't learn that. Now, there's a lot of great medical doctors that are learning how to have good, good, good friends and they're doing holistic clinics. They're helping people in that way. They're not doing the old practices that some of these medical doctors are still doing. Insanity stuff. So, first of all, we are traditional. We're God. We've been around. We created. We're here. We are traditional medicine or traditional healing or traditional health. Not, not allopathy. That's alternative. And we need to get these things right. All these tricksters uses verbiage to trick you. And you have to always be aware. I always listen to every single word and how they say it. Because if you're watching and the mind isn't listening, where the mind is, okay, it's, it's, it's already trained in grooves to hear what it is. But when you pull away from the mind and you're listening, you will hear it. You'll hear exactly the truth of it all. And uh, it's all there. Okay. 
enough of that. I have books by Hilda Clark, uh, uh, Dr. Schultz and Wigmore, Hippocrates Center, Norman Walker, uh, Rick, uh, Rich Anderson, Kristen, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, maybe it's Sherry Rogers, Andy, I don't know a lot of these people here, to tell you the truth. Louise Hay, absolutely. Pam Grout, I don't know uh, some of these people you're talking about. I now believe all diseases are the result of emotional and physical toxicity, deficiency, and blockages, and I have tried to heal myself accordingly. But I seem to be getting worse or not better. So I am writing to ask for your advice. Here's my story. Born 1979, London. Uh, 1990, psoriasis of scalp worsens when stressed, has improved immensely since taking alternative approach since. All right. Stop right there, guys. This, 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 uh, is this a uh, male? Has a psoriasis on top of head. Don't like it on top of head because that means the lymph system in the brain is backed up and that is nothing good that ever comes about acids on brains. <laughs> just not good. So definitely want to start cleaning up the bowels. You know, just what we're talking about here. Getting in, getting the kidneys and the adrenals filtered. First and foremost, get your lymph filtering. So when you're doing that, when you're getting into the human body, you want to think elimination. We want to clean, we want to eliminate. Cleaning is elimination. So we want to make sure that your eliminative organs are functioning. Are you sweating? If you're not sweating, thyroid. Get the thyroid up, start sweating. I like the sun, but you can get into the steam or dry saunas, things like that. All right, kidneys. Huge deal. And you've got two of them. Huge deal. And the glands on top of them. They're your sweethearts. Get in there. Fix them. Get them healthy. Get the adrenals up. There's your emotional component. There's your neurological component. There's your steroid and mineral utilization component. There's your sugar metabolism component. There's a lot of components to the adrenal glands. So obviously they need to be healthy. So then GI tract. That's where you eliminate the, the digestive waste. This is where you absorb your nutrition. So you definitely want to clean up part of that. Parts of kitchen, you know, that's part of the kitchen. So you want to clean all that up. Well, how do you clean the human body? Chemistry. Because chemistry cleans and clogs, right? It's all chemistry, right? So we know that acid side of chemistry is a corrosive side. Obviously, the cellular wastes are acids. Well, we talked about the crib cycle and all the cycles of metabolism and respiration yield acids. So it's obvious that acids are the end product of what we're dealing with and accumulation of those acids. So we want to get the body filtering these acids out of them. That's not the GI tracts issue. It is the kidneys and skin issue. But in that issue is the lymph nodes the lymph vessels, all that whole system. So how do we go in and start cleaning this system out? Well, astringents. When we clean, we're looking at astringent materials. Uh, that's where you go into your fruits and your berries. These are astringents. We also look at energy. We look at uh, alkaline chemistry. We look at the that sort of. All these factors are parts of the cleansing, neutralizing process of the body. That's why when you see the vegetables, they only have a minor cleansing ability. Then you plateau. Everyone who has been detoxified, anyone that's been a, a a serious detoxifier and been up there all the way to the water and dry, understand that. So that's, you have to start with the fruits and the berries. Forget the vegetables. You're, you're, you're not trying to build muscles like a horse. You're trying to clean your body out and, and get that nervous system up. That's fruits and berries and melons. So though, that's the diet that starts this process of internal cleansing and neutralization and hydration from acidosis. It's the only way you can do it. There's no vacuum sweeper. There's nothing made to clean the human body out. You have vibrational forks and everything else. Okay. But chemistry rules here at the physical level. And you use chemistry to deal with chemistry. It's that simple. It's meant for that. And that's what we do. And that's how you would start this process. Oh six, you changed the diet, started on supplements, and stopped all toxic Benavate creams. Probably creams for the uh, oh yeah, coal tar shampoos and stuff like that. Yeah, 
been there and done that a lot of years ago. Did that. 08 diagnosed with SLE lupus plus hypothyroidism after several stressful years doing my PhD in physics. Ooh, I like that. Uh, with increasingly bad symptoms, arthritis of jaws. You see how acidic you are, man? Don't make this complicated. Make this simplistic. You, But is there any surprise here? Look at this guy. He's on Facebook. This guy has psoriasis on the head, which you know is extreme acidosis. Now look down here. We now have up in the head, we've got arthritis of the jaw. Uh, we've got hypothyroidism. All right. And probably some parathyroid suppression right there. He's got uh, arthritis in the hands, the hips, extreme fatigue, so you know his adrenals are shot. Uh, brain fog. Well, of course he's going to have brain fog. Let me see. This is a female, right? Um, she's got butterfly rash, discoid lupus, chronic insomnia. Well, would you expect chronic insomnia? What gland deals with sleep and rest? Pineal gland, where's that at? Up, up. So we know with the psoriasis, your head is loaded. That's the fear, Nadia. The fear is the psoriasis on the head and the central nervous system, and that effect not only on brain fog, but on eyes. You got you got glaucoma pressures that can come with this. You got macular D, wrinkle retinas. You got all the suppression of hearing, the suppression of the olfactory. I can't smell anymore. You've got all kinds of things like that 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 deals with. And the function of the central nervous system and the impairment of the relationship of that to the parasympathetic cerebellum and all that that implies. So absolutely, systemic lupus, that's all systemic arthritis. Uh, and arthritis, it's all acidosis. Everything here is acidosis, acidosis, acidosis. And it's systemic. Notice it's head to toe. Head, obviously. But then if it's in the head, it's everywhere. And that's the problem. Uh, here we go. We got IBS type panic attacks, loss of appetite, and more. Probably has malabsorption, heavy interstitial lymphatic constipation up the GI tract and the esophagus, right on up here. So all these acids are giving her arthritis. Probably also the deterioration of jawbone, deterioration of teeth, gums receding. I mean, you can just go on and on and on with all that acids do. They break you down. Okay. Uh, and more. Put on a Paxil against my wishes and T4 a year later. Stopped working because too ill. Couldn't even get out of bed for several months. Uh, gradually improved over the year. Now, isn't this sad that this lady has suffered all these friggin' years and we got all these people making all this money in the healthcare field? Oh, sad. Sad. She suffered all her life. Started looking into alternative remedies. You mean God remedies, natural remedies earthly remedies, uh, natural health remedies. Once my strength returned, changed diet immediately, cut out what wheat and dairy, started on black seed oil regimen, uh, immediately noticed improvements, added in Essiac after seeing a kinesiologist who gave me another supplement too. Later on, saw a functional medical doctor who drew up a supplement program, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see here. 09 July, first ever outbreak of shingles. So you know you have the herpes. Most of us do that have the smallpox. Obviously, you see that on the news. But it also is an indicator that your myelin sheets are down. Well, what was the first clue? Your kidney and adrenal problem, psoriasis. When you see lymphatic problems, you know the adrenals are down. And you know the kidneys aren't filtering. So immediately when the adrenals are down, here's steroids on one side and neurotransmitters on the other. Remember, on the outside of an, uh, on a gland, we, we call... Uh, uh, the cortex. On the inside of a gland, we call a medulla. So on the medulla, the inner core is the neurotransmitters, cortex, uh, obviously the cortical steroids. But this, uh, generally when, when a gland's backed up, it's backed up in both of those, uh, those issues here. So here's shingles. So she has to what? Get her lymph system moving, get her adrenals up, strengthen the myelin sheath, and she won't have this problem anymore. And detox the herpes out of the body, by the way. Uh, turn approach at first and seemed to heal the lesions. Uh, but a week later, collapsed due to weakness in limbs. Oh, man, this person's been through holy hell. Oh, my God. Still suffering complications, including post uh, her panic uh, neuralgia, benign muscular uh, fasciculations, uh, migraines, and headaches over the next three years. But why wouldn't you have these things? 
Your psoriasis is on the top of the head when you were young. Why wouldn't you have all these things? You would. You would. I don't see anything here, honey, that you're having that wouldn't be that you wouldn't be having with the problem that you're having. Oh, look, and it can get a lot worse. Twin, uh, 2010 to 2012, started doing juice fasting, 3, 5, 7, 10 days, eating more raw foods, did raw food for 5 months in 2012. Over the summer, noticed a reduction in overall pain. No kidding. Bentonite, psyllium shakes. Oh, wow. Clay bass. Uh, F-I-R. Far infrared sinus. Forget that. Go to the uh, steam or other. Regular acupuncture, physiotherapy, walking, yoga, clinics, liver flushes. Passed lots of stones. Felt great afterwards, but stressed my kidneys a lot and had one of the worst nights of my life in the process. Well, you know, that can be hell, but uh, you just said a key most people that do liver flushes don't have kidney problems. So I can just tell you that this is a big issue for you is kidney and adrenals. I think that you really got to put a lot of attention there, sweetheart, to, to get a systemic uh, remedy here. Uh, more supplements, more supplements, of course. Still having migraines and headaches. Also, uh, post-exhaustion uh, headaches getting worse. Strange sensations in the head. Well, that's the problem with acids breaking down tissue in the head. You get all kinds of numbness and weird uh, 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 fluctuations of energy and magnetics and numbness and nod and movements and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't want to get into the Bell's palsy, cerebral palsies and stuff from all that either because this is, you know, all kinds of things can come from this. Ticks, all kinds of things. Uh, oh, my God. Whew, family increasingly worried it was something serious. It's been something serious all along here, honey. Depression set in there, your parathyroid is down. I really believed I would be better by now after all the things I've been doing. Stopped all medication in May 2012. March 13th, okay, very traumatic personal event triggering PTSD, post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome, uh, feelings of uh, brain exploding, kidney pain, ear, see what's happening to this, uh, this poor soul, people. I mean, she's going down, her kidneys are going down, she got ear pain now, general deterioration in health, SE Act help and kidney tincture, increasing emotional, unhappy, and unstable, and your adrenals are going down. You've got to go in, and that's why I believe, guys, that you go into the body systemically. You go in with your sleeves rolled up. You go in with your focus. You go in and you get into the kidneys. You get into the glands. You get into the bowels. You get into that body and work it. You don't just take one little thing here and one little thing there. One little thing here doesn't work. And all the supplements, none of that crap works. You really want to get focused on herbal formulas that are designed for the tissues you know you've got to deal with. And then get on the diet program that will move length. And that's fruits, berries, and melons. And get deeper into this world of detoxification. Go back to your juice fasting you did. Go back and dig in. Get yourself. You're going to need to go on an herbal regimen. No offense. So get yourself herbs for the kidneys, the lymph system. Make sure you're filtering. Check your urine. Pee in a jar. Really get into this. Dig. Fall into this full body. Because you're going to have to, sweetheart. You're so involved here. All these years are stacking on and you're breaking down more. You have not detoxed near deep enough to get to this. You want head detox. You want all this to come out. Okay, by August, still having constant migraines. That's not good. That's too many migraines. All these years, tension headaches, feeling of head exploding. This is what I'm going to tell you guys. This is what's coming. This lady's having all the symptoms that's typical of what's happening to people with the pressure building up in the head. They just want to scream. There's no remedy. It blocks. It's just it's pressure. That's why you get into the kidneys. You get into the eliminative or you start eliminating. You start moving things out. You start breaking down this pressure, this dehydrated pressure, by the way. Uh, exploding, diagnosed by MD as shingles, leading to inflammation of uh, menaces in the brain, had a severe nervous breakdown, mind-body disassociation, fear of being alone, fear of conflict. Wow. Holy crap. Another juice fast for 10 days felt lots better. Isn't that funny? How you go on the fruits and the berries and the melons and you start feeling a lot better or juice fasting and green drinks. September allergic reaction to PBD in her hair dye. Now there's another thing. Cut the hair dyes, guys. You can't do the hair dyes. What's it? What's beautician's biggest problems? Brain cancer and what MS? 
Mm, not good. Worst thing all, brain symptoms. No kidding. Don't put anything on your hair, ladies, you don't want to, that you can't eat. If you can't eat your makeup and you can't eat your hair products, then don't put them on your skin. Because that's just what you're doing. You're eating whatever you put on your skin, you're eating it. It's just a little slower ingestion, but you're still ingesting it. Be careful what you put on your skin, what you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, and what you put on your skin. Is how you bring the outside world of chemistry in. So be careful, ladies, and you men too. You know, get away from petrochemicals and crap like that, lacquers and paint. And, I mean, this, these guys are going down with this. Be very careful what you breathe and what you allow in the body because now your body has to deal with it. And who has to deal with it more is the lymph system, all the mucus, all the storage. And of course, worst thing I mean, kidneys and liver, lungs became very depressed, even much unstable. Wow, man, you really got to fix yourself. November, this is November 13, started counseling. Huge cold sore eruption on my lip because you got herpes, honey. Uh, after a session with a counselor on feeling worthy, good enough, took one month to go down. Second shingle outbreak, tried acupuncture, Q1000, laser, rifle machine, rife machine, black seed oil, Lysine, zinc, vitamin C, and essential oils from Young Living and from Heritage Oils and from Oil of Mercy. All U.S. websites, companies. You know what? I mean, I love essential oils, no question. Um, you know what? I love Young Living. I like the what, karate guy guy. Uh, very expensive oils, but nice oils. But oils are oils, you know. Uh, you want to detox these herpes out of your body here. The Rife Machine, big deal. You know what? Don't waste your money. I had a rife machine for a number of years. And you know what? We're not trying to kill bacteria or parasites with, with, with frequencies. And uh, I did do, I will say this, I had a guy with a collapsed lung. And he came in with a collapsed lung, believe this or not. Actually, I think I home visited him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we went to go see that guy. And so I brought my rife machine and I gave it to him over the weekend and popped his lung back. How, how about that? I thought that was strange. But that was an interesting thing. But you are not getting in physically with physical chemistry and, and, and moving this out. Lysine never fixes it. Zinc never fixes it. And you could unbalance your body's chemistry. Vitamin C, antagonistic to calcium, etc., etc. December to date. Several more shingle outbreaks always in the same place. But of course, H -L -H HS over the spleen area. In fact, the area feels uh, itchy even when well, you've got to be full of fungus after all this. Kidneys increasingly painful, tender, swollen. You're going to lose your kidneys if you're not careful. You better get a blood work up and see what your creatinine is in your blood because you're having way too much kidney pain, honey. I'd, I'd go get me a full blood work up and get you a CBC with diff and a full metabolic panel and let's see what you look like there because that's what I'd want to see is what your blood work up looks like. I started doing daily coffee enemas and using the Rife machine. I've always been taking Dr. Schultz's Uh, KBT and KB tincture. Well, the kidneys, uh, you need those. Uh, and drinking lemon water and bicarbonate of water once every day. Well, at least you're moving down in. Some of what you're doing is good. You want to move full body into this detox. Get yourself on exclusively fruits, berries, and melons. Get shuck the vegetables. Dig deep. Get on a, 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 a one of our regiments where you really are taking on everything that's relative to what you need to get done. The, key, the lymph with the kidneys, the adrenals with the kidneys. You can't just take the kidneys, you got to deal with the adrenals which control the kidneys. And then you want to get to the lymph system and move that. Oh, wait a minute, you want to clean up the bowels, you want to clean up the liver and the spleen while you're doing You know what I'm saying? Get into full body detox. You're just hitting and missing here and there. And uh, if you're only half acid you're getting half assed results. So you want to dig in and really dig in. I just also started taking your Hill All Tea. I have the capsules too, but don't know how many I should take. Two or three, three times a day. I cannot afford to uh, experience a healing crisis. Yeah, you can't afford not to. I'm going to just tell you, sweetheart, you're in trouble, honey. You're in serious trouble. And dementia and Alzheimer's is coming down your road. Where you, you, know, you don't want to end up in a nursing home in your 50s. Uh, not good. And, and I'm just being real with you. You know, somebody needs to be real with you here. Uh, I need the general approach right now. What does that mean? No general approach for you. I mean, you've got some serious things going on, Nadia. 
If you want the general, gen, gentle approach, mm, I don't know. I'm real gentle when I need to be. But I'm also not when I don't. And you don't need to be. you got some serious things going here. I don't even, you know, I don't want to take up any more time with your case, sweetheart. But I'm telling you, you got serious issues here. As a side note, I, I should mention that my mother passed away from a painful journey with ALS. That's Lou Gehrig's. And this is just what she's working on, or worse. Lou Gehrig's, uh, 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 MS, uh, uh, Parkinson's, uh, Bell's or cerebral palsies, honey. No! Get yourself out. Well, this is why your kidney and adrenals are hurting. Here's your mother right here. I can tell you right now. You know, poor thing. In 1990, oh, 1996, when she was only 17 years old. That's why you've got a heck of a road, because your mom was so acidic and toxic. You've got to realize what your mom had and what was up there and go fix yourself as well. That's sad. After suffering 10 years. So here her mother suffered 10 years and passed when she was young and needed her mother. I mean, I, I just, that, this planet's out of balance in that way. It needs to be a better place. But then, you know, it is what it is here. My older sister has chronic fatigue syndrome since 2002, and my father has diabetes since 1993. Well, there's all your kidneys and adrenals right there affording this huge neurological and sewer system. And that's what you got, sweetheart. Blessings and delight to you. And roll up your sleeves and dig the frig in. <laughs> Facebook people, you see this, and you realize here that she wants to go easy, and I'm sure she's in some job or whatever, but when you, you've got to realize that this case here is a very serious case. She has got major, major problems, and to, to look at all that she's went through here, and uh, this is uh, brain, kidney failures there. I mean, you can see all kinds of things coming, and it, 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 and already there. So, uh, Nadia, you've got to get yourself back into a state of wellness. So whatever you do and how you do it, you've got to get yourself focused. Make sure you have the fruits. However you need to do this, you need to do this. Or life isn't going to be too much fun, and you're only, what, 33? That's, a, that, that's sad. That's sad. Sad your mom had to go through that, your dad said to but there's a remedy. And that remedy you're seeing right here on this site. And all the great YouTubers and all the great, they're all here to help. And that's, that, that, that's the beauty of you guys. It is. It's the beauty of you guys. I have a bunch of, bunch of you guys standing right here, right now in this room. Did you know that? <laughs> well, you know, I was giving a uh, talk one time out in Corpus Christi, Texas. And it was a spiritual seminar I put on. That can car, basically, but talking about out-of-body experiences and stuff like that. And I was kind of new to Texas at that time. And uh, half the people came in with cowboy boots and cowboy hats, and I just, I, w I was just so amazed. And I, I realized, that was way back in the 70s or 80s, and I realized that, you know, you can't judge. Here's these people that are cowboys wanting out-of-body experiences. And I'm going, yeah, yeah. So I, I love that. But there was a guy that he was in the medical profession, and he uh, he said, "You know, I came to your talk, but I wasn't there in my physical body." He said, "I laid down to take a nap, and suddenly I I came out of my body. I went over the hotel, I went into the hotel, and I was hovering and listening to your talk." Oh, that's pretty cool. I remember one time. I think I told you guys. I remember one time I uh, I put on a talk in a little town, and mainly uh, Mexican spirit, uh, Spanish. And so uh, I went into the town, I rented a room, I, I postered, I put ads in the newspaper, and then I went back and put on the talk. And I, I had about four or five people with me to help me give the talk. And so no one in their physical body showed up, so everybody started to pack up and wanted to leave. I said, oh no, oh no, this room is so full, I can't hardly breathe. So we gave the talk. And boy, you could feel the energy in the room, you could feel the souls in the room, it's pretty cool stuff. So, remember, all these worlds are immersed in us and around us. Cool stuff, guys. Thank you for your dedication. Oh, thank you, too. This is uh, Krista from Canada and Aubrey. All right. My partner, who is closing in on 70 this year, needs some help. Uh, he has a, a uh, 
tremor that he says is getting worse to the point where he can't do anything in the kitchen, can't bring a cup of tea to the table without spilling it. Okay, so I'm going to use an antispasmodic to help with this, to help the, the, the tremor here. I'm going to get out in with upper circuit brain and nerve, no question about that. I'm going to get this guy detoxed. I'm going to get to the adrenals and kidneys. Of course, at 70, you're going to go into those kidneys and adrenals, and you're going to get this guy filtering. That's key. At 70, and at 70, you're going to clean up that GI tract because you want the brain to drain. And you want to get all this lymph cleaned out, the mucus and the acids out of the brain, the inflammation. Upper circuit brain and nerve, uh, anti-spasmodic uh, for the tremors, and full bore down the detox route. 70 years old, it's got an old body, needs to get cleaned up. Getting too acidic. And you don't want to have Alzheimer's dementia in your, in your friend here, in your partner. Uh, it has been with him for many years, and he has tried to use uh, Valium and alcohol and cocaine to lessen the effects. No, you've got to simply rebuild. Think of rebuilding, not treating. Okay? He is no longer using these things except uh, for some cannabis. He uh, went to a rehab center about 20 years ago, and they told him there was no cure, just pharma drugs, which he won't take. Yeah, there's total cure to that. Total care, strengthen the mind and cheese, get into the, get into the herbs, get into the diet, and I'll show you how to reverse this thing. He had bronchial asthma as a child and also and almost died. Okay, so you know he's really congested in the lungs, the bronchi, you know his nervous system's weak feeding that, which is the adrenal glands, you know, clean up his gut, clean up the kidneys, get the kidneys filtering, get the adrenals up. He is doing a lot more fruit now, no breads, very little cheese, no cheese, and some protein, no protein now and then. Yeah. I mean, you got to get in. You know, that's why I say, when you have a problem, especially as serious as neurological problems, these are serious problems, guys. Your whole ability to perceive and comprehend and to enjoy your journey and to remember your journey you know, all these things are involved in this. So these are serious issues. For some, they don't take it so serious. Oh, I got a little tremor, you know. No, 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 no. These are all serious issues. And you must take care of these. Clean and strengthen applies to every single thing out there that you can come up with. And very important stuff here. Now, he is taking the neuro, oh, oh, neuromuscular, that's the antispasmodic herbal form, and he says that the tremor is more pronounced when he takes it. Wow, that's a problem. That's an antispasmodic, and I use it for all seizures and everything. That's a bit of a problem. He is taking the neuromuscular herbal formula, and he says that the tremor is more pronounced when he takes it. That's scary. Now, is that the uh, uh, glycerin or the uh, uh, alcohol one? So try the brain and nerve number two and see how that works. I've never had anybody say that the tremor gets work on an antispasmodic. Ooh, that could be uh, really serious. He can't do green juices with parsley or any leafy vegetable because he breaks out in a red itchy rash which leaves scars when he scratches them. He, wow, this guy is so acidic. It's not even funny. Imagine you're so acidic that it leaves a scar when you scratch yourself. That is very weak skin, very acidic person here. No wonder he's having so serious a problem. It seems that he won't go to doc, so he is living with this condition. Any suggestions? Absolutely, ladies. Get him on a raw food diet, particularly no vegetables, high fruits, berries, and melons. Get into the kidneys and adrenals and work that way. Try the brain and nerve and upper circulation and see if that works. Want to muscle test him on all the herbs first because he's so acidic. When you when your antispasmodic doesn't work, that is scary. So, anyway, you want to muscle test him. Muscle test him on the brain and nerve. There might be one herb in there that his body doesn't want. So it's possible, but uh, really want to work with him in that way and uh, take care of this guy because 70 years old, he's got some problems. And this is just the, the tremors and everything are just on the road to dementia. And you want to uh, 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 take care of this man. Now, this is from Mary. Uh, hello, Dr. Morris. Uh, bless you for sharing your love, sweetheart. Thank you. Bless you. Oh, my pleasure to, to, to share. My pleasure to be here with you. My, totally my pleasure. 
in regards to the adrenal glandules, is it necessary to gradually increase your dose when first starting off, or would it be uh, all right to just start taking two capsules three times a day of the 400s from the, the la- ooh, well, I probably, I'm one of those guys that like to start low first and build up to something, so I'd probably take one three times a day. Uh, if you muscle test super strong, most people are handling two and three and uh, one to three capsules three times a day on that 400. You know, it's almost like the thyroid, you have to be real careful with it. You can't hit it too hard. We have 400 or 500 milligram thyroids. you got to be dead before you take those. Those things will make your heart race like crazy. So we use the 150s. And I don't keep you on a thyroid glandular for more than a couple of months at the most. Same thing with the parathyroid glandular. The adrenals, people are so low in the adrenals, you can take those things like candy. Uh, that's amazing. You can't take the pituitary and the other ones like candy, but this one you can, I guess. So you work with that. Start low first and then build yourself up. I'm taking them to treat my chronic asthma. Oh, absolutely. I think you'll probably handle two, three times. Uh, and now this is a case where she's also going to have real low blood pressure, uh, especially once her kidneys are fixed up. That's something you might find out. And I so yeah, I would go on up with that. I'd start with one, three, and then go up to two. I feel some relief from taking one capsule three times a day, but I'm aching to take more. Well, listen to your inner guidance. Listen to your body. You know, if your body's saying take more, can't hurt, take more. Try it. It just can make you, you too much can make you just a little jittery temporarily. Also, I'm not sure whether the grapes that I purchased from the farmer's market is truly organic, but I'm juicing them instead of consuming them uh, whole so as it avoid eating the flesh of the grape. Nah, I would. Now, wash that flesh of that grape. It's those peels that absorb that have the worst problems with that, like strawberries and peaches. It is uh, there any harm in consuming large amounts of grape juice, apple juice in one setting? Heck no. As much as you can hold, you know when the body goes like this, you've had enough. But uh, thank you guys for all the questions. Great questions. Got a lot of suffering people out there. I haven't even cracked. I'll just never be able, I realize this, I'll never be able to keep up with you guys unless I just stop seeing people and spend full time doing this. Well, I can't do that yet, but uh, you guys, this is fun stuff. You, you, you're all such beautiful souls and so great. I love every one of you. I appreciate uh the the time that you allow me into your world and to help you and and it helps us all it's all working together i'm a t- I, I like teams i like to work in teams even though i'm kind of a loner guy i i like uh i'm a recluse i like to live in in peace and uh i, I like to be alone a lot of times too uh just to have that intenseness and that alone time but uh i i love you guys have done so i'm so proud of you guys this world just needs to have an elevation of spirituality and an understanding of how to get well and there's a lot of work to do with some of these people's bodies some of these souls bodies are you know needing some work so been a pleasure. I hope you all are having fun with your journeys and enjoying your journeys and and having some great spiritual insights and out-of-body travels if you like that and want that. If not, I hope you're doing well in your health journey as well. And let's all work together and uh, and let's get the world healthy. Love you all. Have a fun day and uh, may the blessings be.